are the third largest economy in the world, housing a third of the world's poor. A country that has not been able to feed its entire population and looking forward to ensure right to food to its people. India has improved its position in the Global Hunger Index. It has climbed eight positions in the index from 63 last year to 55 this year. Though it still trails behind nations like Malawi, Ghana, Suriname and neighboring Nepal and Sri Lanka. And its hunger status remains classified as serious. On domestic front, the concerns are whether the current rate of growth of agriculture and its system of distraction, food will be able to reach the needy. At the heart of this attempt lies the debatable issue of conflicting criterions of poverty estimation in our country. Globally, with the world population rising, the demographers are busy wondering whether there will be enough food for an extra 2 to 4 billion people in the next 40 years. Above all, how easy will it be to realize the dream of family farming, feeding the world, caring for the earth, which happens to be the theme for World Food Day this year. We are trying to find answers to all these questions in today's edition of Public Forum. And Dr. Purnima Menon, who is a Senior Research Fellow with International Food Policy and Research Institute, the IFPRI, joins me now. Dr. Menon, thank you very much for joining us here. Of course, your organization was instrumental in releasing the, uh, the Global Hunger Index. Right. But, uh, you know, Dr. Menon, what are the indicators like when we say that India has improved its position from 63 to 55 amidst a group of 76 countries? Is it a very happy sign? Is, are there signals of revival, recovery in the country? Or do you think that there's much to do and read behind these figures? <laughs> um, I, I think it's a little bit of everything. Firstly, um, it, it is good news, obviously, that uh, we have the new data to, um, to give us the new numbers on the index. And, and that's always a good thing. Um, it's not unexpected to see these improvements in countries where economies are growing and when, where there are at least some ongoing social sector investments. So that's, that's the good news. The, the trend is positive and um, you know, I think uh, one should be happy to see that. But of course the job is hardly far from being done. Yeah. Uh, a third of India's children are still underweight as the report shows. Um, and there's a long way to go on the hunger, on the hunger index itself. I mean, if you look at each of the different subcomponents of the index, the one that worries me the most personally mm -hmm. is the one where we have, I think, the longest uh, distance to go. Mm -hmm. um, India ranks 120 out of 128 countries on um, child malnutrition. Right. So we are sort of, you know, still a long way to go on, on quite a few things. Mm. Um, so it's, it, it is a mixed bag. Um, it's one that should give us hope, though, uh, because the trend is decent. The trend is decent. But you know, what's very uh, interesting is, I mean, one of the catch points which uh, many reports have also highlighted is the fact that uh, the prevalence of underweight in children under the age of five has come down from 2005 right. figure, which was 43.5%. It has uh, come down to 30.7% in uh, this year, that is in 2014. But there is a gap of like eight years. So we are actually estimating an eight-year lag here. And interestingly, uh, for the knowledge of our viewers, if I could just tell, uh, in 1990, uh, this figure stood at 55.5%, which uh, came down to 44.8% in 1995, that is five years later, and in 2000 this stood at 46.3 percent, which means there was again an increase uh, of about 2 percent and more between 95 and 2000, which came down in 2005, has further come down mm -hmm. in 2014 after a gap of eight years. What does this really indicate? Does this mean more education, more awareness uh, specifically to the households which were badly affected by this phenomenon? That is the question of the day. You yeah. know, a, a, lot of, um, a lot of the media coverage, a, a lot of the questions that we've been asked as well has been around, you know, what has led to, to these improvements. And um, I, all of the research on improving uh, child nutrition tells us it's probably a combination of different things. But what we have at this point is we have the one number. Uh, we don't have all of the detailed data that's needed to actually do the kind of analysis that's needed to understand these changes. Um, in my mind, you know, there are questions around 
uh, where have those changes come from? You know, in, we're looking at one number for all of India, but India is made up of several states, and, and we really sort of need to dig in and say, did the changes come from um, X state or Y state? You know, uh -huh. did, w we know that some changes come from Maharashtra. There was, you know, there's been a very nice analysis done by some other colleagues of ours that looks at the Maharashtra story. Mm -hmm. um, and everything that we have seen in there tells us it's, it's a combination of things. You know, there's no doubt it's um, the improvements in economic growth contribute a little bit, but we know they don't do enough. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously improvements in maternal education, improvements in the sanitation environment, um, improvements in household assets. And, and these are things that either, you know, that accumulate slowly if all you're doing is growth. Mm. Uh, there are things that can be accelerated if there are investments in accelerating them. Uh -huh. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that the investments in accelerating some of these social determinants has been very different across all of India. Across all of India. Yeah. So the real story for me is going to be once, you know, once all the data are out and once we can sort of really dig in and say, you know, what happened in, in Maharashtra? What happened in Assam? What happened in UP? Where is it that we need to move if we want to really move these numbers. Where is it that, you know, most attention is needed? You know, but, uh, you know Dr., uh, Dr. Menon here, if we understand, if we try to understand here the, the, uh, the, the reasons why this global hunger index is generally, is annually released, uh, one has to really see, uh, you're actually targeting 120 low-income countries, That's out right. of which you are ranking 76 countries. And uh, there is there are three, four criterions. One is, of course, the undernourished people, then the prevalence of underweight and mortality mm -hmm. rate. Uh, what does this really say about the state of affairs globally? Does it uh, seem to be the case that over the years, with the fact that the GHI comes every year, and there is this large message that is sent across the globe, that fine, this is how the countries are performing, they really need to put in more efforts? And then, of course, you know, it, it, is, it always coincides, coincides with the World Food Day because it has to come accordingly. Do you see that there is a sense of improvement globally? Or do you think it is just restricted to some uh, developing countries, developing economies? Okay. Um, there certainly is improvement every, uh, you know, this year we've seen some really big changes from, 2000, uh, from 1990, from when, you know, how far back the index goes. And yeah. So there's certainly quite a lot of good news in the index as well. Um, for instance, the, since 1990, um, 26, 27 countries have really improved their scores. The other piece of the good news is that there's been a 39% reduction in the overall score. If you take the, you know, all of the countries together, mm -hmm. there's been a 39% reduction between 1990 and now. And, right. and that's obviously good news, right, you know, right. there's, there's quite a lot to celebrate, but I, I think those of us who, right. who work in the field uh, are constantly thinking about right. what more needs to be done. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there is quite a lot of good news there. Um, every year the index also looks at where things have improved and where things have not improved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unsurprisingly, there are um, some countries uh, which are in sort of conflict-ridden areas or where there's been political strife, et cetera, which is where uh, the scores just, you know, don't show improvements mm. and, in fact, have, have declined. So, for instance, in, in Iraq, mm. uh, the Global Hunger Index has, has worsened. And, and has this worsened. Is, th those are conditions, of course, that lead to uh, the, the kind of social environment. And it is very obvious for us to compare uh, India's rank with other countries, specifically with the neighboring countries, That's where right. you see Bangladesh and Pakistan uh, almost at the same rank of 57, but, uh, you know, India really not doing that well uh, as compared to nations like Nepal or Sri Lanka. That's right. Uh, what does it really indicate about, about specifically about this region? Well, firstly, the, you know, let's look at South Asia as a whole. Mm -hmm. and, and when we look across the globe, it is in South Asia that the, the problem of, in South Asia and some countries in, in Sub-Saharan Africa where the problem is, is the greatest. South Asia has also this year seen the greatest decline across the different regions and that decline is largely coming from the improvements that uh, we've seen in India with the underweight right. uh, data in kids. Um, there's a lot, of, there's a long way to go across all of these countries in the region, mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, countries like Nepal, countries like Sri Lanka have managed to move some of these indicators because 
again, there the, the child underweight and the child mortality numbers, which contribute quite a lot to the index, have, have moved really quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. There have been investments that have you know, moved those things. Uh -huh. so okay, uh, let me now introduce another panelist who joins me now, uh, Dr. Vandana Prasad, who's a community pediatrician and a public health expert. She's a national convener, Public Health Resource Network. Dr. Prasad, welcome to the program. Uh, before you joined us, of course, we were talking about the Global Hunger Index and India's show on that index. Uh, are there signals uh, of recovery uh, of some sort of a revival for uh, of India's growth story here where you see that the hunger index on the hunger index India has climbed eight positions or are they just um, indications of the fact that much of the efforts have been put up by uh, the organizations who have been uh, spreading the awareness also by the government and other bodies to, uh, in order to ensure that, you know, at least the malnutrition part, the underweight uh, children under five years, that can be brought down. See, firstly, I, I really welcome the fact that there is data. I mean, there's been <laughs> such a dearth of data and such a drought of data that any data, whether it be good, bad or indifferent, I mean this very seriously because we need to take stock of where we are and we've been uh, struggling with this issue for decades and decades in this country, some of us. Um, so I really welcome the fact that there is this data, though we haven't, it's not really public and right. we haven't seen the data. Um, and uh, this increase of about, uh, uh, what is it, about 15 points or so over a period of nearly 10 years mm. is something that one would expect. Mm. Uh, you know, about a point and a half a year is not uh, dramatically great. Uh, it's as one would expect in a country uh, like mm. India where there has been quite a focus on the issue in the last decade or so where uh, the NRHM has come up and the ICDS uh, reforms and restructuring uh, has gained some momentum where the Food Security Act has you know uh, uh, been brought in so it's as we would expect so it's not a you know it's not a blip in uh, our expectations yeah. and uh, also one must say that we think that this can be highly uh, accelerated this rate uh, can and must be highly accelerated. It's good to see that there has been a drop and you know, there's no decline, there has been a drop. Um, uh, but uh, we think that 30% uh, is still very high. Yes, hmm. absolutely. Very high. And 30% uh, being the average, uh, where there are pockets of deprivation and malnutrition, this is, we know this from our own data. We've been doing baselines across the country in small you know, micro studies. And uh, um, uh, really, it would be to the tune of, uh, Underweight, which is a composite indicator, would be 50 to 70 percent, maybe, you know, and stunting we've seen in, especially in tribal areas, can go up to 60 percent, 65 percent, 70 percent. Acute malnutrition uh, also being fairly high. So uh, I think there's nothing to be uh, complacent about here. It's a good mm. trend. It's only the trend that one would expect from a country like India, which is. Um, uh, has so much potential to, you know, deliver. Mm. Um, so uh, it's a good thing to hear, but I, I hope that it will only spur us on to much greater, much accelerated action really. Hmm. But you know, whenever we jump into some sort of a comparative analysis, it is very obvious to see why uh, some other countries, for example, you have Ghana, you have Malawi and Suriname doing so well as compared to yeah. India. It really gives us, since you said that 30% also is a huge figure huge and we really need to, you know, ensure yeah. that at least we cover this gap. Yeah. over the next one year, over the next four or five years at least, so that you know, we, yeah. we, we bring it down to the extent that we can say, fine, it's gone from the country. Yeah. Do you see, Dr. Prasad, there is a possibility of the kind? Uh, can we be really that positive about our, uh, about our see, country? See, there is immense possibility. But I do want to say one thing that uh, uh, we can't very easily compare uh, these situations and these countries and these continents even because there has been uh, research and publications uh, recently especially to, to suggest that the mal malnutrition that we see in India uh, is an acute and chronic malnutrition. Our levels of stunting are very, very high. Uh, the, the factors that determine the situation of acute and chronic are rather different. Uh, so uh, therefore, the, the trend is going to be somewhat different and the strategies that we need are going to be also different. Uh, within the region also, I'm not an expert, not as much as Purnima here, but uh, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the complexity of India and the challenge of India uh, as compared to some of the smaller countries um, 
uh, the differences between uh, the investments in health, for example, these That's are very right. critical, Absolutely. very critical differences. Right. Um, where there has been a head start in both Sri Lanka and uh, possibly in Nepal also, I'm not very sure, but definitely in Sri Lanka. So uh, I think it's not an easy comparison uh, and possibly not even a fair one, but we have a very good sense of what India as India as a country, uh, a subcontinent can really do to accelerate and bring in. So I think uh, just to um, answer your question in a nutshell, whether it can be done, it absolutely can be done that within the next decade we see a very dramatic uh, reduction. And we're seeing this at state level, you know, so if we uh, look at states, even districts, and uh, we are seeing the differentials actually in our experience. Even at block level, there are major differences uh -huh. in regions and you know areas. Right. So um, uh, some states, uh, Odisha, uh, Maharashtra, you know, these are uh, Madhya Pradesh has ha had a survey also which has shown reduction. So those states which started off really uh, much worse. Uh, Jharkhand in terms of mortality, though have there has up. been some debate. So low-hanging fruit has, uh, you know, been been captured, and uh, now um, uh, I think that it is really getting to the core of uh, uh, the hard core of um, uh, determinants. Some of them are very, very systemic in nature. Mm -hmm. I think the health system plays a very major role. Water and sanitation plays a major role, and uh, food diversity and uh, quality of food. These are now the, the difficult, hardcore, systemic issues which will re require major investments uh, from this country. Okay, fine. We'll take a very quick break now in public forum. After the break, we'll discuss some other aspects related to the Global Hunger Index.